Hello everyone. So in the last part, we talked about El Nino and La Nina, right? So now we shall be talking about Western disturbances and jet streams. So in order to understand Western disturbances, first we have to know about what are jet streams. Okay, so first let me explain it to you what are jet streams. Jet streams are nothing but geostropic winds. Now, what do you mean by geostropic winds? Geostropic winds are nothing but upper atmospheric winds, or to be more precise, upper tropospheric winds. Okay, so since these winds are upper tropospheric winds, right, or upper atmospheric winds, so they are beyond the control of friction or no effect of friction. So, no friction is in play, right? So, what are the forces that leads to changes in its direction as well as its speed? Only Coriolis force, A, Coriolis force, and B, pressure gradient. Okay, pressure gradient. So, what I mean by this is that, now suppose this is the earth. And this is the equator. Okay, so equator is what? Equator is nothing but your low pressure area. So here, what will happen? There is ascending of air, right? So once the air is ascending, it will cool adiabatically. Once it cools, it starts to spread in both the direction, right? So when it is spreading in the uh, in both the direction, it moves in the right direction in the northern hemisphere. And in case of your southern hemisphere it moves in this direction okay this is because of Coriolis force so what does the Coriolis force say once the air is rising in the northern hemisphere it is moving in this direction okay so hence because of the Coriolis force it will move in the right direction right in case of southern hemisphere the wind is moving in this direction or towards southern direction as a result of the Coriolis force it moves in your left direction as a result of which in both the hemisphere the direction of the jet stream is from west to east okay so this is about your jet streams now we have to look into certain facts regarding jet streams jet streams are narrow bands how narrow it extends between 50 to 150 kilometers Next important characteristic is speed. Its speed varies between 170 km per hour and 470 km per hour. Okay, so this is about your speed. And it extends between your pole region and 20 degree north south okay the next important feature is that it is present between two contrasting air masses so what i mean by this is this Suppose we, we have a cold region here and a hot region here. Okay, so cold air mass and hot air mass. So jet streams flows in between the cold air mass and the hot air mass. Okay, in which direction? In this direction, right? But 
Another important fact about jet stream is that it does not move in a straight path. It meanders. Now, the next question that will be in your mind is why do they meander? Because this is cold air mass, this is hot air mass, right? This cold air mass would tend to move into the region of the hot air mass and the hot air mass would tend to move in the region of your cold air mass. As a result of which, as you can see here, this is a straight path, right? So instead of moving in a straight path, as these areas are moving into each other, we will get the structure or the flow of the jet streams as a meander, right, here. Yeah. So I have said that it meanders because of the cold air mass and the hot air mass moving into each other's region, right. So how many types of contrasting air masses do we have on the earth? Now this is evident from this schematic representation of the Hadley cell, the Farrell cell and the Polar cell, right? If this, this is the Hadley cell, this is the Farrell cell and this is the Polar cell, right? So these are nothing but contrasting air masses and then what are these I have already explained it to you while explaining you your prevailing wind systems or planetary wind systems, right? Now, I have said that the jet streams are present in between two contrasting air masses, right? Hence, these jet streams are present in this location, okay? So, based on contrasting air masses, we have two types of jet streams. As I have marked as one and two, right? The one is called as your subtropical jet stream. Okay, this jet stream extends between 10 to 16 kilometers and it is present between 20 to 25 degree north south latitude. Okay, this is about your subtropical jet stream. Now, what is 2? Two? 2 refers to your polar jet stream. This polar jet stream, its extent is from 9 to 12 kilometers and it is present between 60 to 65 degree north-south latitude, okay? So the origin of the subtropical jet stream and the polar jet stream is because of what? Because of contrasting air masses, right? But there is another type of jet stream which is not dynamic or because of your contrasting air masses or it is not dynamic in nature. It is because of thermal in nature which is called as your easterly jet stream. So what is this easterly jet stream? During the summer times, Okay, during the summer times, the Tibetan Plateau, and this is India, the Tibetan Plateau gets intensely heated as a result of which there is a low pressure area here. And correspondingly, in Africa, we'll have a high pressure area. Okay, as a result of which, on the ground level, we'll have a wind flowing from high pressure to low pressure area. Right, and in the upper troposphere, we will have a wind system moving from low pressure area of the Tibetan plateau to your high pressure area of your Africa, right? This is your easterly jet stream. This is thermal in origin and not dynamic in nature. Okay, this is thermal in origin. So this is about your jet streams, right? So I have explained you jet streams. Now you can, now you will be able to understand what are Western disturbances, okay? So the next topic that I'll be talking about is Western disturbances. This phenomena occurs during winters 
and it is related to ITCZ. Now, what is ITCZ? ITCZ is nothing but it is called as intertropical convergence zone, right? It is also called as your doldrums. Now, what are doldrums? I have already explained it to you while explaining your planetary wind system. For now, just understand that ITCZ is nothing but where your trade winds merge or move into each other, right? Now, now this ITCZ or this zone moves along with the moves along with the movement of the sun. As we all know, during the summer times, the sun moves towards the north or towards the Tropic of Cancer, as a result of which the ITCZ will move towards north, right? But during the winters, the sun moves towards the south or towards your trop uh, Tropic of Capricorn, right? As a result of which, this ITCZ also moves towards the south. Due to this, what happens? This subtropical jet stream also moves downward direction. Now, suppose this is India. Right? This subtropical jet stream, which was initially present at a latitude of 25 degrees Celsius, will move southward in di this direction. Right? As a result of the collision, it gets divided into two streams. Okay? So, one is to the north of, the e north of India and another is to the south of India. The southern branch of the subtropical jet stream moves into India. Okay, so how is it affecting India during the winter period? So this jet stream here brings here it brings low pressure depressions. from Mediterranean region. Okay, these low pressure depressions are nothing but cyclonic activities. Okay, these cyclonic activities are moving in this direction and enters India when during the winters. Okay, and this rainfall or precipitation is helpful for rabbi crops okay so this is about your western disturbances so now you have a fairly good idea about el nino la nina western disturbances and jet streams okay this is where i end today thank you